we were sitting outside on folding chairs, singing a cappello. There were no hymnals, there, there were no bulletins. People sang and prayed from memory. It was a Sunday afternoon in Lesotho, in Southern Africa. And even though I did not know the language that was being sung and prayed, I understood that the Spirit of the Lord was present. We gathered in a cinder block building with only a small table in the front of the room with a cross on it. People sang in loud voices, prayed with a lot of energy. We sat on folding chairs there too. And it was morning, morning worship in Ecuador. And the Spirit of the Lord was present. And in another small room in a busy city, People were sitting on pews that later would be moved and tables brought in and the pews put up to the tables for lunch. But in that small room as worship began, there were two simple flower arrangements in the front of the church and a banner with a huge peace symbol on it. And the pastor was asking all of us to pray for peace, for peace all around the world. It was morning worship in Hiroshima, Japan. Wherever I have traveled and whenever I've had the opportunity to worship in a local church, I have always felt like I was at home. I may not be able to speak the language of the country or understand that language, but I knew that I was welcome and that the Spirit of the Lord was present in that congregation. Some of you have had experiences of worshiping in other cultures. And it's when we recognize in those moments that it's not the building that brings us together in community. It doesn't matter whether we are seated or whether we have hymnals or bulletins. None of that matters because we are gathered as the body of Christ. Remembering Jesus' words that when two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You know, the early church had no buildings, no staff, and very few followers. What they had going for them was that they had embodied the spirit of Jesus. They had embodied Jesus' love and care and grace. And people were drawn to these early Christians because they could see and hear and feel that this was a community of hope and love. They could see that this community embodied those values and those qualities. They could see that the spirit of the Lord was present. We heard these words from uh, the Gospel of Luke today, this story about how Jesus goes back to his hometown and he goes into the synagogue. And as Kim said, you know, he's going to read the scriptures. Hometown boy comes back and he unrolls the scroll and it comes to the words of the prophet Isaiah, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus reads that and then he rolls up the scroll. He gives it back to the attendant and then he sits down. Everyone's watching him. Like, what's going to happen next? What's he going to do? What's he going to say? And Jesus sits down and he simply says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And that was that. End of sermon. It's like Jesus is saying, hey, people, you've heard these words before. You know that it can be fulfilled in your hearing. At that moment, Jesus shared his mission and everything else that happens after this moment, everything that Jesus says, everything that Jesus does goes back to these words. We're reminded that it was the gospel of Luke, the writer of Luke, who also records the song, the words of Mary about the one that she is carrying is coming to turn the world upside down. There's no doubt that Jesus is going to bring hope to the poor and everyone who is left out and free those who are bound. These words from Isaiah quoted by Jesus are fulfilled by Jesus and they are at the center of the gospel. 
and the shaping of our understanding of who Jesus is and what Jesus does. And the implication is that for those of us who claim to follow Jesus, for those of us who proclaim that we are disciples of Jesus, this is the passage that we need to keep going back to over and over and over again as a measure of our work and our ministry. You see, it's not just that the spirit of the Lord of God is upon Jesus, but the spirit of the Lord is upon us. The spirit of the Lord is to be embodied in the church. And we are constantly called to ask ourselves the question, how is the spirit of the Lord being embodied in us? What are we saying? What are we doing that is an expression or an embodiment of what we know in Jesus Christ? How are we paying attention to all of those who are imprisoned? How are we paying attention to all of those who have been harmed by the culture, the poverty, and all the isms that we can list? What are we saying and doing that proclaims new beginnings for those who have failed or struggled or who have been pushed aside? I love how the readings for today put the, the letter of Paul, this 12th chapter in the parts of the body, next to Jesus' words quoted from Isaiah. Because Paul reminds us that we are a body. As Jesus was a body and embodied the love of God, we are to be seen as connected to one another in a community like a body where everyone is important. Everyone brings gifts to the work of the embodiment of Jesus so that the fulfillment of the Lord can be seen in our time and place. I'm grateful to Jean Ellen for leading a class this month on identifying your spiritual gifts. All of us can take that time, talk to one another. Where do you see my gifts? Where do you see me being a part of the body? Where do you see me embodying the spirit of the Lord? Because all of us, all of us are called to embody that spirit. Paul reminds us that we cannot belong without belonging. I know that doesn't make sense, but it does. You can't belong without belonging. If you claim to be a follower of Jesus, you have agreed to be a part of the body. You have promised to contribute to the working of the body of Christ and embodying the spirit of the Lord wherever we go. We all know what it's like when a part of the body is not working. And as I get older, I am more and more aware of the parts of the body that don't work the same way. So in Corinthians, we are reminded that each of those body parts needs to be working and contributing for the body to be whole and to be filled. There is no such thing as belonging without participating. The body does not work. When someone says, oh, hey there, I'm just going to take a break for a couple years. That's like me just saying, oh, I'm just not going to use my arm today. Or maybe I'll just tell my foot not to work today. It doesn't work that way. Paul reminds us, how many times does he use this image of the body in great detail so that you and I can get the idea we are all important. We are all important. When we were baptized, we were given that gift of belonging. And at the same time, we signed up for the responsibility of being a functioning part of the body. Every part is valued. Every part of the body, every one of us is valued. There is no place for anyone to claim that their gift is not important or less important. There is no place for someone to say, you really don't need me. There is no place for any of us to say, we don't need you. And there is certainly no place in the body of Christ in the church for someone to say, I'm more important than you are, or we have no job for you, or because you don't look like us, or come from around here, or you have an able body, or you're too young, too old, too weird, or you come from the wrong side of town. No one gets to say who belongs to the body of Christ. We all belong one to another. I think sometimes we forget that. I think sometimes 
uh, we forget that we have to figure out how those parts of the body can work together. Sometimes we have to teach one another how that body part may contribute to the whole. But think about that whole image of the spirit of the Lord is upon me, says Jesus. It's been fulfilled in your hearing. And Paul reminds us that we are that embodiment of Jesus and the spirit of the Lord. So no matter where, no matter how, no matter what language, no matter what size of the congregation, we are the community of Christ, the body, here and everywhere in the world where people are the disciples of Christ. We are the fulfillment of the words Jesus spoke. We are a body of people caring for one another, sharing the word of God in the world. Can we read these words today and claim them for ourselves? That this scripture is fulfilled or being fulfilled in our hearing, in our life as a church and a congregation. When people see you or when they see me, do they see Jesus? Do they see and know that Jesus is present? So I would like us to repeat these words together just so that we can claim again that the Spirit of the Lord is upon each one of us, and we are called to embody that Spirit in the world. So will you join with me as, and repeat these words after me? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, because he has anointed me, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. May this be fulfilled in our time and our place. May this be fulfilled in our time and our place. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.